TV. Welcome back to another edition of Ski Locker. I, of course, am DJ Ski, coming to you live from the Ski Lodge, where today we have four latest and greatest releases that are coming out this week and one that came out last week. So we got the Foam Posit Crimsons, the Liverpool LeBrons, the Raptor Charcoal Jordan 7 Retros, and Air Max 90 Hyperfuse with infrared. We're going to talk about them right now. Ski TV, show you the review. Goes down. This is Ski Locker. <laughs> So first up, we're going to start with the Crimson Foam Posits. Now it's a silver upper with a bright crimson trim. Now uh, in the pictures, they actually looked a little bit more orange and a little bit lighter to me. In person, you'll really see how it's almost like a neon red or orangish pink. It's really like a salmon color. It looks really good. At first, I was kind of thrown off because I expected to see it a little different. The pictures didn't do it justice, and I kind of went in expecting something else after, though looking at them and putting them on my feet. One of my favorite foam posit colorways. In terms of the quality, it's you know it's a solid shoe. I haven't seen anything bad. It's actually been pretty good quality. I don't have any defects on this. No paint chip. The foam posit stuff looks to be good. I don't see any misaligned glue or anything. So far, I've been really happy with this. Now, one thing I noticed on these foam posits, they've been making the loops on the back a lot bigger. So I, I don't know if I necessarily like the style, but it seems like, you know, Maybe people were having issues or something, but they're definitely bigger and a little bit thicker than some of the old foam posit loops of the past. You have the Nike Air, the Swoosh Air on the inside, but overall a sick looking shoe. I'm definitely gonna try to grab um, another pair, but the quality's been pretty impressive for these. No real defects. And the foam posits hold up pretty well anyway, so it's gonna be a good show. Definitely something I recommend. Unique colorway, especially to end up the summer, start the fall for the foam posit line. Foam posit Pro Crimson right here. Next up, we have the Air Max 90 Hyperfuse Infrareds NRG Premiums. Now, this original Air Max 90 colorway is classic. They released last year. I got a couple pair of those. And I actually still prefer the regular original versions versus the Hyperfuse. These went up on Nike.com and all the Nike towns obviously did their Twitter RSVP and they sold out instantly, which is crazy because it shows you how messed up the shoe game is. Usually, you'd be able to get the shoes at least the day of the release. This time, you had to wait in line, you had to camp, you had to get lucky. Not the best days for us true sneakerheads in terms of getting what you want, but I was lucky enough to get a pair of these. So, um, in terms of the quality, good quality shoe. You know, that I've always, Air Max 90s are a staple in, in my collection and amongst my favorites. I'm actually wearing some right now on my real feet. But um, anyways, uh, when you get to this, it's the Hyperfuse quality material, which is really good. It's light, it feels good, it's comfortable. The color scheme, it looks identical to the Air Max 90 infrareds. Uh, it obviously doesn't have the suede or the same materials. That's the big difference. Definitely something worth copying. If I had to choi the choice to wear one pair for the rest of my life, I'd choose the originals just because I prefer that with the different materials and suede. It might not be as technologically advanced as this. If I was going to run a race, it'd definitely be these. But still a great shoe. I don't know if they're worth... To me, they're worth the hype, but... In this day and age, Air Max 90s used to never have this crazy type of hype around them. So quality-wise, everything seems on point with this release. I don't see pain over the different places. Of course, uh, with the Hyperfuse, you get the different types of textures and the way the Nike swoosh is embedded on there. You don't have a lot of the other materials that you have with the original Air Max 90s. These are a little bit more expensive than a traditional Air Max 90, but great shoe. If you're Air Max head, you gotta have these. Good luck getting them. I wish they made more of them. Classic shoe right here. Next up in the ski locker, we have the Liverpool Edition LeBron 9 low tops. Now, these were actually shown a few months ago with the Liverpool logo and a bunch of trophies on the bottom. Of course, Liverpool from the English Premier Soccer League team, LeBron owns a minority stake in them. This matches their colors. Um, unfortunately, the release version, I don't know if they had, if they had to deal with I'm sure it actually had to deal with copyrights and clearance, but it just has the LeBron James logo. No trophies on the bottom, but overall it's still a dope shoe. Um, the one thing I don't love about it, the red, especially on, on the paint, is real like almost glossy. I wish it was a little more subdued. I love the tone of the green turquoise on this. Um, it's a real unique colorway, that's why I picked these ones up. I thought, you know, 
it's something that's definitely going to stand out. The LeBron 9 lows are pretty good. I've always liked it. They're pretty good shoes. This is my favorite colorway of them. And, you know, the ice bottom really makes them look clean. Hopefully it doesn't yellow fast like some of the older LeBron, especially the LeBron 8s if you had the clear sole. They'd yellow real quick. You get the LeBron on the inside, black on the tongue. It's a really good design thing. I'm not in love with the actual red, especially as you can see on the toe, how it's kind of glossy and shiny a little bit. You'll have to see it in person to really judge because the pictures don't do it justice, but still a unique colorway. Something cool, just minor gripes. That's my personal preference. Um, these shouldn't be as hard as these other shoes on here to get, but they're still going to come at a premium. So if you want them, you better act fast. Just a cool, unique colorway that will definitely stand out for the final LeBron 9 lows before we see next year's LeBron 10s. Now finally, we'll get to the shoe a lot of you have all been waiting for for this year. It's the Air Jordan 7 Retro. This is known as the Raptors by a lot of people. Some people refuse to call them the Raptors and call them the Dark Charcoals just because it's all pretty much new, but it's not suede like the original Raptors, amongst other small texture things, but all the stores and all the online sites are still calling them the Raptors just because it's based around those colors. I'll let you guys debate that in the comments. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to get into the actual shoe. Now let me preface it by saying I'm a huge Jordan head, but the 7 has never been my favorite of the line. Um, it's a good shoe. If you watch my unboxing Golden Moment packs, you can see I clearly like the 6 is better. Partly because the 7s I thought were kind of plain. It was more black with just a little bit of gold. At least these step out with some purple and red. It, it's a cool color scheme, but you almost wish they did a little more. Still a pretty plain shoe. It's pretty much all black, especially if you see it from the top. You get the mountains with a little bit of the red and purple. Obviously the red jump man, gray on the tongue, purple on the back. The bottom is where it really shines, but a lot of people aren't going to see that. So it's kind of a plain shoe, which to me is a little bit disappointing. Look, it's a, it's an original retro, the 92 version, so I know a lot of people are happy, but I was never honestly a huge fan being point blank of that. So I'm going into it like that. In terms of quality, again, they seem to be pretty good. There's some glue you can see where the mountain meets at the heel. Um, Overall, nothing too bad. I don't love a lot of the way the, the new Beck is and some of the new Jordans. Also, the, the one thing I don't like about the Sevens is that they, they come tied tight. You have to, uh, and the top part around your ankle can kind of look a little funny if it's tied too tight. As you can see, it's a small hole right there. Obviously, you have to unlace it to make them looser, but just not my favorite preference of shoe. Um, other than that, in terms of design, everything seems pretty solid, pretty decent. What you've come to expect from a Jordan Retro these days. Nothing glaring other than a couple of the glue things. There's some more glue on that side. If you're a Jordan 7 fan and missed out on the Raptors and want to join in the hype, definitely get them. Um, I'm just going to stick to this. I'm probably not going to jump in again. Usually I buy multiple pairs. If I love a shoe, I'm probably just going to stick to this. My personal preference, some people are going to think I'm crazy, but hey, got to keep it real. So out of these bunch, my favorite... Definitely the foam posit. I've always been a foam posit head, but the foam posit Pro Crimsons and the Air Max 90 Hyperfuse. It's a close. It's a tie for me. They both have subtle but unique colors that really stand out. Classic models, new versions of them. That's what I would recommend. The LeBrons are a great shoe too. Jordan Sevens, decent retro. If you like Jordan Sevens, get them. Otherwise, don't buy into them just for the hype. That's my advice. If you're a real sneakerhead, get what you really like and what you're gonna wear. Now I gotta listen to my advice. Ski Locker will be back soon with more shoes. You know how we do. Follow me Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at DJ Ski if you want to see more of my collection. And one of these days, I promise you, we're going to take you really deep. This is just like the new stuff. I haven't shown you the old stuff I've been collecting for years and 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 years. And years. Yeah. <laughs>